After what feels like 100 years of waiting, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has finally arrived. What's up everybody? I am here to bring you tales. Tales of adventure, tales of Link, tales of Breath of the Wild, and let me tell you, it has been a majestic experience. I think that's the best word. I've played five hours of the game thus far, and I'm here to share my experience and convey to you what this game is about. Now, Nintendo provided the review copy, and they also provided a list of stepping stones, things that I am prohibited to talk about. So if you are worried about spoilers, fear not. I, I can't talk about any of them. So I can't discuss storyline. I can't discuss major characters. I can't discuss villages. I can't discuss certain weapons and gear, certain abilities, certain places. So any of the real juicy stuff you want to experience for yourself, don't worry. That is saved for you and Nintendo bars it from these uh, impressions. But what I can tell you about is, is how the game feels, how it plays, and some of the incredible things I've come across. And I'll be honest with you, this is a game that's hard to really boil down to a few sentences, a few paragraphs, even a 20 minute video. There is so much here, it is chock full of content and chock full of experience. It's a game that's meant to be played, but I will do my darndest to give you that experience as best as I possibly can. You know, it starts out kind of linear. You've all seen the intro uh, where Link awakens, grabs his Sheikah Slate, goes and meets the old man, and begins on the Great Plateau. But once you progress beyond the first 45, 60 minutes, that little linear uh, beginning, they just thrust you into the world. And from there, you're able to go forth and explore this insanely huge world full of all sorts of creatures, all sorts of environments, all sorts of challenges, and a whole lot of shrines. And it's really an awe-inspiring feeling to see this massive Zelda world and know that you can go anywhere. A little daunting, in fact. You, you open up and you're you know, just told to go forth. And you have some, some general focus, right? You have some general guidelines of, of what you're trying to accomplish. And you can go straight to Calamity Ganon if, if that's yeah, your, your, your kind of plan. You want to head straight for the end of the game. You can do that. And I'm sure it'll be a speedrunner's dream. Uh, I didn't do that. I chose to take more of the scenic route and power up uh, because you will need it. The game is challenging. There are definitely areas you can wander to that are not right for your current link. Uh, you're acquiring heart containers, you're acquiring more stamina, and you'll accomplish this by beating shrines. Every four completed shrines will grant you a new heart or a new chunk of stamina. And I think shrines are a great place to start because they sort of form connective tissue uh, amongst the land, right? I see shrines, I want to accomplish them, and those are sort of the markers I use to dictate where I go. Now obviously you will have quests that give you you know, more specific routes, but I like using the shrines because not only are they evident, you see these orange beacons, this glow around the world, uh, and you know like, hey, that's somewhere interesting to go. There's shrines and there's towers, and we'll get to those in a second, but the shrines are the brain teasers of the game. They are the mini dungeons. They are the chance for you to utilize your runes, and you've seen the runes like Magnesis, um, and you have seen uh, some of the others as well, and those shrines are, are quite cool. Some of them are very easy, some of them are very short, but some provide real interesting ways to implement uh, not only the runes, but the physics of the game. And there's one in particular that I, I absolutely loved, and it involves uh, using your stasis ability, which stops time for an object. And then if any sort of force is applied to said object while it is frozen in time, that force is multiplied. And so you can imagine all sorts of interesting puzzles with this, but the, the one here, really a remarkable little challenge. You have to take this ball uh, and somehow launch it far off uh, down this long ramp into uh, its receptacle. And, and that shrine has another challenge that continues uh, on that same train of thought. And again, some are just a single note. Um, some have two or three mini challenges and some are more about movement, some are about combat. Uh, and, and most are of the brain teaser format, but I find them really nice and, and breaks from the typical explorative action and combat of the game. Now, I also mentioned towers, and those serve as sort of your lookouts and will help fill out the map. Uh, looking at the map, it is gigantic. 
And it's important to find these towers because they will help you to uh, fill in and detail a said map. And that's important to know where you're headed, what's around you, uh, and eventually give context to your, your story, your exploration. So I find those, I find the shrines, and then I find a whole lot of enemies. And there are a, a crazy uh, just amount of foes. I, I've faced a bunch of different enemies and some real unique ones, some real uh, tried and true familiar faces, but the combat has grown on me. It started off a little simplistic, but once you acquire uh, the ability to see how much health an enemy has, once you are able to sort of pick up better and better gear, uh, remember, this game is different in that there are stats on the weaponry. So you're looking always for better melee weapons. You're, you're, you're consistently finding better bows. And you're looking to add an arsenal of arrows, ice arrows, fire arrows, bomb arrows. Uh, and, and find what works best for you. Two-handed weapons, one-handed weapons. Are you a sword and shield guy? Do you want to carry around a giant club? Maybe a mop is more your style. But either way, eventually, you're facing off against uh, this this wide range of enemies and you have to utilize some different techniques uh, for what they are they are bringing to the table and so you got to bring something unique right back now for the most part you can kind of go in there and hack and slash your way through it hasn't become dark souls it hasn't become something that requires that level of specificity but I do think that once you acquire uh, once you acquire your runes and once you gain um, some knowledge of the combat, including the parry system and the ability to dodge and execute a flurry attack, which is just a gorgeous display uh, of swordsmanship. It's a really enjoyable combat and gameplay loop there. Um, plus, just the, the, the life that they've breathed uh, into all of the enemies, into the world itself, rather, is quite remarkable. You know, there's so much color, there's so much just spark and charm. Even the writing has been funny at times. It's been engaging. It's been cool. I feel like they really uh, have struck a a level of polish across the board that is super impressive. Um, and and it still feels like Zelda. It still feels like combat wise. It feels like that. Even though you know you are acquiring you know weapons and stats, you still have that tried and true feel. The runes, uh, while totally, uh, you know, they have their own unique properties that are only in Breath of the Wild, they still allow you to do things in ways uh, that are reminiscent of past Zelda puzzles. But where it gets real different is, again, this this giant sense of just unknown exploration. And they consistently talked about how they wanted to call back to the original Legend of Zelda and sort of that fun feeling of just figuring it all out. And that's very true here. There is very little hand-holding, um, and it, it feels unique in 2017 to have a game that just says go. And you're collecting a whole lot of stuff. There is inventory management and resource gathering and cooking and always looking for the, the next best thing, right? You have a limited number of weapon slots, so you're always trying to figure out a balance. But I also found myself keeping a variety, so I wanted to, you know, take a number of weapons that could serve a variety of purposes. And here I have to be careful because I can't tell you specific weapons or whatnot, uh, but you will sort of build out uh, an entire arsenal, and it may change depending on your needs. Now, the world itself is beautiful, the, the weather changes, the day-night changes, and the orchestral soundtrack enhance this. You're riding on horseback through a gorgeous field, and the sun is setting, and maybe it starts to drizzle, and it's just, it looks really beautiful. And I, I find myself wanting to record all of it or screenshot all of it because there's just some moments you're like, holy crap, I need to show somebody this, or I want to save this uh, and get it printed out or something because it really creates that kind of... Uh, visual feast and it may not be the crispiest game it may not have the most next-gen visuals but I think the art style uh, and the visual deliciousness that they've achieved here um, is super satisfying and there is uh, definitely a little bit of, of blank space if I had to say my, my biggest gripe thus far is that some areas of the map are a little too open there's a little too much uh, space in between. Now, some people may find that great to have gaps in their adventure and and spaces to just kind of wander. 
Uh, but I do wish some of the areas were a little more condensed. And I, I did feel like it started off a little slow. It really picks up, like I said, once you acquire uh, a full slate of your runes and once you are really in that good uh, cycle of, of getting weapons, breaking weapons, getting weapons, because they're breaking all the time. So you have to, you have to be flexible with your arsenal uh, constantly. And that's something that I have found fun, not frustrating. You know, there's so many weapons around, and you can constantly pick up weapons from defeated foes. So it's not like you're 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 wanting uh, for swords or wanting for spears or wanting for for things like that. Um, it's different in that it doesn't seem like there are traditional items. It doesn't seem like you're going to find, you know, the hook shot or or whatnot. There may be things that do similar uh, and accomplish similar tasks and again the runes and the, and the physics system plays into that um, but it's not it's not the typical format and I think that may fluster some uh, I can't speak about the dungeons um, so they're there uh, but that's all I can say for now we'll talk about that uh, closer to launch but I think uh, you know this this does feel like an evolution of the Legend of Zelda while retaining and implementing so many fun aspects. There are things and, and characters and areas and elements that pop up that I was like, holy crap, didn't know that was going to be here. Holy crap, can't believe that's back. Whoa, they included this too? And that that's really enjoyable. And I, I like those moments where I, I feel the callbacks and I feel the, the lore and the history of this franchise uh, being utilized to enhance and flesh out an already cool world. Um, that world is is navigated via a stamina meter now, and I think that's something that uh, is a welcome addition to to Zelda and to Link's behaviors. He can jump, he can crouch, he can run, and it does get a little annoying when you're like, I just want to sprint across this field. I wish I had unlimited stamina, but you do have to balance that out. And you know, with those shrines. Every four that you complete, you can pick if you want a new heart container or if you want a new chunk of stamina. And so that's a really tough decision. Do you want to last longer against enemies or do you want more uh, more oomph and more energy to explore? Because climbing is a huge part of this game. You'll be climbing everything. You'll be climbing up towers. You'll be climbing up cliffs. You'll be climbing up... Uh, hopefully you won't be climbing up wet stuff because that's really hard to climb. It, it makes you slip and fall, and, and the weather, whether it be lightning striking your metal gear or whether it be the, the wet wood not allowing you to ascend as high as you normally uh, should be able to, the weather does have a factor and play a role here, and nighttime plays a role. Um, but you will be climbing, whether it's day, whether it's night, whatever time it is, you'll be climbing a lot. So stamina, you know, it's a worthwhile investment. And I have so far kind of kept an even balance um, because as much as I like the hearts, you have so many items that can refill that. This is a game where you're constantly picking up mushrooms, constantly uh, cooking new recipes, constantly finding uh, trinkets and items and things to enhance and boost Link. Uh, of course, you have to manage the temperature if you're somewhere cold. Of course, there's a sound meter. Uh, that deals with his his stealthiness and many of the enemies are set up in, in sort of camps or groups and so being stealthy and taking out the the guard is really a good way to go but if you don't you'll just have a fun fight on your hands and the the enemies react to the world quite well uh, whether they're sliding down a cliff falling and drowning uh, getting lit on fire and trying to trying to find some uh, semblance of, of, of hope it's fun to, to watch their exaggerated expressions and emotions uh, react to Link, the, the amazing uh, and deadly <laughs> adventurer that he is. And one other thing I have to mention is just how cool it is to play this game on the Switch. Breath of the Wild, yes, is being released on both Wii U and Switch, but having a handheld home console hybrid and being able to take The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the biggest Zelda yet, on the go, on the couch, on a freaking airplane. I played hours of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on an airplane today and that was just crazy to me to be experiencing this quality and this level of game wherever I want. I, I, I have to mention that. It is such a cool 
little touch, really a cool big touch, to now be able to carry these Nintendo gems wherever I go and continue my quest, continue my play, continue the fun in a, a, such a variety of locations and styles, whether it's docked with the TV, whether it's handheld in your hands, or whether it's kickstand up for some tabletop grip action, I have loved playing Zelda on this new vision of gaming from Nintendo. It all kind of forms this really fun package that keeps me wanting more. I think the fact that it is spread out, I think the fact that there are explorative hours, you know, and it's not just dungeon, 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 um, gives this sense that you don't want to put the controller down because you just want to go see what's over there. You want to go head this way. You don't know what you're going to find. Maybe you find a village. Maybe you find a cache of, of rare stones, and stones can be sold to Beetle and, and to shops for the uh, for your rupee collection, and then you can use that to purchase other things. And maybe you want to just seek out the shrines or find the towers. Maybe you come across a tower and you're like, I cannot beat the enemies to get up here, and so therefore I'm going to have to go complete more shrines to get more hearts. Well, you get to a shrine, and you can't figure out how to enter it. You may need to come back later, uh, but but it, it, it again, that's not frustrating because it's not frequent, and when it does happen, it's just like, oh, there's so much more I need to, to discover and so much more I need to uncover in order to have a full grasp of this world and of this game, and I feel like I still don't. I feel like five hours in, I have just scratched the surface on what The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is. And they promised that they would pack in a lot of secrets and a lot of goodies and a lot of uh, just fun stuff for fans of the franchise and for gamers alike. And it seems like it's in there. Obviously, I have not seen nowhere near any, uh, nowhere near all of it in five hours. But the little morsel I have received has been satisfying. And there's some stuff I wish I could tell you about, even in the first five hours. And that will have to wait till a later date. But know that, that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a fantastic game. Know that it is a, a majestic achievement to have such a giant world that still has the good, tried-and-true Zelda feel, still has fun combat, still has engaging action, still has a huge sense of wonder, now with added a little bit of stat management, a little bit of resource management, a little bit of link management, you gotta feed the guy, and his, his eating animations are hilarious. Uh, and just so many nice touches. And you will go on side quests, and you will have quests, uh, but they're a little more open and a little less traditional. This is not a, uh, you know, a, a, a Western open world game. This is not a... Uh, really, it's, it's kind of unique. It sits in its own spot. It's hard to pinpoint this as exactly what it is, especially because there's still so much to uncover and so much to, to, to explore for the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 hours. You know, a completionist is going to have one heck of a six months with this game. There is so much there. And I love some of the systems. Um, I love that the shrines are enjoyable and also give you ideas for how to maybe implement some of these things in the above ground world um, and also contribute to your your upgrading of Link. So gaining those shrine uh, completions and the spirit orbs uh, that are bestowed upon you is crucial to you adventuring farther. So it, it's, it fits this really good cycle of, okay, I see it, I can go there, but maybe I'm not ready, so now I need to go and explore the shrines and the towers, and maybe I need to go find a village, maybe I need to, maybe I want to continue down the main quest a little bit, maybe I want to find some gear, ooh, I found this super cool thing, now how am I going to utilize that to better conquer uh, the rest of the world? And the fast travel uh, is in there. Uh, to speak a little on the performance of the game, I haven't noticed anything uh, major there have been a few instances of, of frame rate issue. Um, I have not experienced any of the Joy-Con uh, connectivity issues. And the load times can be long-ish um, upon uh, fast travel. But for the most part, it's a very, uh, a very connected 
world and connected experience. So when you open a door, you go right in. There is no blank screen or load screen there. It's only on death and on fast travel. Um, there's a little load when you go down into a shrine, and I wish that was eliminated, um, but it is a completely different looking environment, and I'm sure, you know, with the setup of the shrines, that takes a little bit of oomph, so I can't really complain there. Um, but in, in closing, I'm really enjoying my time. In fact, it was so hard to pull away to come make this video because I just want to discover all of it. I want to figure out what what the dungeons are like. I want to figure out what the the rest of the story is. And there there is story in there. You are getting, you know, voiced uh, scenes. You are getting a lot of dialogue. You are getting, uh, you know, sort of the the meat and potatoes of what's going on in this world and and why and and where and and how and who and uh, I wish I could go into to detail, but again. No spoilers is probably the best way to experience this. And I think that sense of discovery um, is what I love most. And it may seem a little unconventional, a little daunting at first, but I implore you to push beyond if that is, is what you feel. Because I, I can almost guarantee that in another hour or two, you will feel the same sense of amazement and wonder that I now feel as I wander uh, the mountains, the plains, the villages, the lakes... And, and more of Breath of the Wild and I can't wait to comb the land for all of its secrets and all of its fun and eventually go take on Calamity Ganon but for now I will leave you with that if you have any questions or uh, specific uh, requests let me know in the comments below I will do my best to answer uh, or discuss them in a subsequent video um, we'll be back next week with a whole lot more coverage and a whole lot more detail. For now, though, I think we have uh, we've given you a good tale of my first five hours, and I hope it leaves you excited because it has left me even more excited than before I uh, first inserted that cartridge. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are in a fantastic day. Make sure to subscribe if you want more Zelda Breath of the Wild coverage and Switch coverage in general. I appreciate all of your support. And until next time...